2023 predictions. So this is going to be another quick rapid fire video. Essentially, I'm just going to talk about some things that I think are going to happen in this upcoming year. And the reason I'm putting this on the record is because it'll be a test to see how well my overall knowledge of the whole investment and stock market thing is. And if by the end of 2023, what I've said is wrong, then I know what I need to tweak in my sort of investment journey. Now, originally I was going to add in some stuff that isn't stock market related, but the problem is if I said a bunch of, I guess, non-financial stuff like, oh, I think this sports team is going to win and I think this YouTuber is going to be the next big superstar and stuff like that. A lot of that stuff is a lot more random than stock tips, so obviously anyone can make some prediction about that kind of stuff and get unlucky with it. So yeah, anyway, I was going to do stuff like that, but this video is going to be basically sticking to stock market and the economy and shit like that. So let's go. First prediction, YouTube AdSense will continue to decrease. So I don't get paid from YouTube, but I, I'm aware of how their YouTubers get paid, you know, through their cut in AdSense, which is the ads that pop up before a video, and then sponsored integration, which is the Oh, first I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, so-and-so. And then there's affiliate links and just general stuff that isn't directly YouTube related, but it's brand related. Like, like for example, The Rock, a very big brand. He sells a lot of shit, right? But it's not because he's got a big YouTube channel, it's because he's got a big brand name. So in terms of YouTube, it's mainly sponsors and AdSense. But everything else they sell isn't directly YouTube related, it's brand related. But anyway, back to YouTube and AdSense. Because we're headed into a recession and the cost of debt is getting more expensive, co companies will be reluctant to spend so much on advertising. So naturally that pushes down their advertising costs, which means YouTubers will receive less money from those advertisements. And the same deal will happen with sponsors. They won't be willing to pay as much or they may even stop sponsoring as many videos from certain creators. So if you're a YouTuber, your income is going to decline in 2023, if my prediction is correct. Now, inflation in the United States will end the year at around 5.1%. So the last reading, it was 7.1%. There has been a drastic decrease in the M2 money supply recently, but due to a variety of factors, such as the recent move from the Bank of Japan, potentially increased demand from China and everything going on with commodities, I think this will contribute to inflation staying a little bit higher than what some people think it will stay at. But the cost of a lot of things will decrease throughout the year, make no mistake. But inflation as a whole, I think it's going to end around 5.1%. Now, I could do the proper mathematical summary for calculating inflation, which is the quantity theory of money from, which I got from Steve Hankey and I think John Greenwood. But to be honest, I don't have time for that. And this is just a rough prediction. And obviously this is a prediction for the end of the year. So another 12 months from now. So there's a lot of factors that could change. So even if I did the proper calculation, I could essentially just be wasting my time because things throughout the year will change. Now, next prediction, inflation in Australia will end the year higher than what it is in the United States. So at the moment, I think it's neck and neck. For the whole year, United States inflation was higher than what it is here in Australia. But based on the RBA raising rates at a slower pace than the United States, coupled with some other more domestic Australian matters, I firmly believe that inflation here will end the year higher than it is in the United States. One such factor is our low unemployment rate. So the unemployment rate in the United States from what I've seen at the moment is quite low, but I'm pretty sure that is very botched data from what I've seen. But here in Australia, statistics aside, my anecdotal experiences show me that it's an employee's job market here. So this will just help contribute to higher wages overall, which means people are more likely to spend more. So inflation will persist and especially if china does i guess reopen fully i don't know about that but if chinese demand picks up 
that's going to like Chinese demand for commodities picks up, then obviously that's good for Australian companies because we've got quite a few commodity based companies here in Australia. So that'll increase the amount of sales they get, increases the amount of money they make, a la more money in circulation. Now, speaking of the RBA and all that, I think Australia's cash rate will be around 4.1% around June. The reason I didn't say end of the year is because we could potentially get rate cuts here in Australia. There's speculation that Philip Lowe is going to be under immense pressure to cut rates because this economy sucks off housing like no tomorrow. And especially because all the politicians here have bucket loads of rental and investment properties that they want to just keep propped up. Obviously, these rate hikes aren't the best for those. So they're going to continually grill Philip Lowe and they're going to keep using the trope of, oh, you're hurting first home buyers and the lower income earners and shit like that without realizing that that's how you defeat inflation. So I think the RBA rates will peak around 4.1% around June. At the moment, at the time of recording, they're 3.1%. They'll have about five-ish meetings until June. I reckon we'll get a 0.25 rate hike at four of them, and one of them will have no move, or we may have like two meetings with no moves, two meetings with 0.25, and one with 0.5. I don't know, but I just think we're going to have around 4.1% around June, and I think it may peak there. And I believe that's what the market is pricing in at the moment too, but... That's six months away. A lot can change. And last general broad prediction, the stock market as a whole will continue to fall further. So the market is calling the Fed dot plot a bluff. The Fed is calling the markets bluff. Don't fight the Fed. So essentially the market is currently pricing in around a terminal Fed funds rate, which is the highest, the highest interest rate we will get before the Fed pauses raising rates or cuts it but basically the market thinks that's going to be 4.6 percent at the moment and the fed is saying it's going to be around 5.1 percent so the market is saying oh nah the fed you're too chicken to raise them as high as 5.1 percent and the fed is saying nah market you're wrong you're way too high at the moment you should be a lot lower because you're only pricing in 4.6 percent not 5.1 percent like we are going to do so the Fed has been bluffing in the past, but this time I don't think they are. So once the market realizes that, we are headed down further in the stock market. We have this and we will also have earnings compressions. So at the moment, the expectations for a lot of companies' earnings reports are a lot more generous than what I think will actually be reported. So when all these companies miss their earnings targets, the stocks of those companies will drop and obviously if those stocks drop if most of them drop because they miss earnings that will bring the stock market down as a whole thus earnings compression so speaking of stocks we may go into some specific predictions let's see how these pan out so longs which is stocks that i would buy i'm not going to buy yet if at all, because my trading's moved to more of a swing trader strategy. And like I said, I think we're going to get a lot lower in the market before we go up. But if my strategy had to be buy something at the start of the year, it would be DBO. Now, DBO is an oil fund. Currently, there are some headwinds to the price of oil. Like basically headwinds are things that will stop the price of oil going higher. One such thing is a recession, which we are going to get. Obviously, oil isn't just for filling up your cars and stuff. It's used in the production of a lot of materials and used in a lot of services too. When a recession hits, the demand for all of this extra stuff is going to go down, which means those companies aren't going to need to produce as much stuff, which means their demand for oil will be down a bit lower. But then you've got also things such as the geopolitical tensions and the, pro the oil cap and the sanctions and all this other shit. So if I had to choose, I would imagine that this stock would be 
up by the end of the year like it will close up it will be a very bumpy ride but i think it'll ultimately close up but if it does close down for the year i wouldn't really be surprised next up lac lithium americas corp so with the transition to the green energy thing you know we all need electric vehicles and stuff lithium is a key component of batteries which are going to be used for electric vehicles and I just, I have a feeling there's going to be more of a political push to that stuff in 2023. We've seen political pushes to that stuff in the, you know, last few years, but I don't think they're going to try and go back to using coal or anything. They have in some other countries. I think Germany did it recently. Same with nuclear as well. I think Japan and Germany may have done something with that. Maybe some of the European country like the Netherlands, or maybe they're the ones who completely banned it when they shouldn't have i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure on all the details but my prediction is that lithium america's corp will close up for the year of 2023 now the reason i choose this over the lithium etf lit is because i held both of these in 2021 and lithium america's corp drastically outperformed lit at least in the time i was holding it which is why i picked lac over lit and last one for my predictions for stocks that'll end the year up is KRBN. I think the like proper name is the Crane Shares Global Carbon ETF. I, I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head, but essentially it's a carbon credits company. So there's been more of a renewed demand for that in the past few months from what I've seen. And essentially what this is, is it's a license to pollute. So in the future, what will happen is with the whole green energy stuff going on, there are going to be some companies that need to use fossil fuels to produce the same amount of goods and services they were before, or the same amount to meet demand, whatever. There's simply not going to be enough energy they can derive from clean sources like wind, solar, water, you know, stuff like that. So they're still going to need to use some fossil fuels to produce those goods and services. But the government will likely have like regulated it a lot more or banned it outright by this point in time. Like this is years down the track, right? But what they will allow is companies will have to pay the government to use these fossil fuel sources, which is basically a carbon credit. A carbon credit is essentially a license to pollute. The companies will say, hey, government, we need to... We need to use fossil fuels to produce these goods and services to keep our company going. We know it's kind of banned at the moment, but we'll pay you this amount so that we have a license to produce this stuff. Slash the government essentially just turns a blind eye in exchange for a fee, kind of like a bribe, but not really, but kind of. So that's essentially what a carbon credit is. There's a bit more to it, but that's very simply how it's put. So in that little explanation i mentioned this was years down the track but again i have seen renewed demand for it and there are some investors like me who are jumping onto this stuff you know a bit early but regardless i think that this is going to close the year up so as for shorts or companies that i think will end the year down if not completely go bankrupt we're starting off with arc this is Kathy Wood's ETF. So she's become very delusional as of late. And I predict she will continue this delusion into 2023. And thus continue making bad investments such as, you know, buying the dip in Teladoc or whatever innovative company that she has planned next. Another thing is the way that Kathy Wood's fund is structured. Every time an investor sells, that mutual fund... ARC needs to sell off some stock to give money back to that investor, which causes further downward selling pressure on that mutual fund. So if you were to basically just buy every stock in Kathy Wood's ETF and just hold it, although it would go down, it wouldn't go down at the same rate as her mutual fund. So that's another thing that plays into the fact that I think this is going to close the year down even further. Next up, Peloton. An electric bike uh, slash subscription company. Most gym rats will agree that this is a bad idea. 
I'll be surprised if this company isn't bankrupt by the end of 2023. So I wasn't in the whole investing space in 2020. I kind of was 2021, but it was more so just very general crypto bro shit. Nothing to do with the macro economy or anything. But from what I have seen, there was a lot of people pumping this particular stock, thinking it was the future because gyms are shut. We're all going to be riding our bike indoors. Uh, if you're a gym rat, you know that this makes absolutely no sense. I myself have a home gym, but I prefer an actual gym because the atmosphere is just different. And, well, I don't know about you, but I've made a lot of friends through gym. What happens is you essentially go frequently enough at the same time because, you know, you have work or something. Other people are on the same boat and then eventually you just get talking and then you make friends from there. I've met girls at the gym in the past, so if that's your thing that floats your boat, that's fine. But you're not going to be making friends or meeting girls or any boys, whoever. Using Peloton. I don't know if they have some like subscription thing where I don't know if in their subscription thing you can like ride with other users or something like that but obviously that's also not the same thing as going to an actual gym and the most important thing of all is it's only a bike it's not a full actual gym set there's no barbells dumbbells resistance bands cables anything like that so yeah any gym rat will have known that this was a rubbish idea I think meet Kevin and Tom Nash were pumping this stock, but next up, Carvana. Now, this company can't do anything right in regards to car compliance, and coupled with falling prices in secondhand cars, this company will struggle. And there is already news that they are close to bankruptcy. I'll be surprised if they still exist by 2023 end. So, essentially, Carvana doesn't even do all the proper legal work in terms of selling you a car like they've sold unregistered cars to people they've sold stolen cars to people they've sold faulty cars to people and in terms of the bankruptcy thing two of their biggest creditors recently i guess like colluded together saying hey we think carvano is going to go bankrupt we're going to sort of reach some sort of agreement to get as much back as we can before they file for bankruptcy because if we do this after they file for bankruptcy it's going to be a lot more messy than it is right now and in the last several days, at the time of recording this voiceover, I've noticed that Carvana has been one of the, I guess, worst moving stocks in my watch list consistently. So the writing is on the wall. The only reason this stock gets pumped is because of oversold technicals and the algorithms pick it up and shit like that. But yeah, I'd be very surprised if this company isn't bankrupt by the end of 2023. Next up, Blackstone, a real estate investment company, and they've recently frozen withdrawals. So there's something brewing. Why would you freeze withdrawals? My guess is that they were over leveraged on the property market. And because property prices are falling everywhere, except in my region in Australia, they're running into some financial problems. So I don't know if they use leverage on this or anything, but from what I've seen, Blackstone isn't headed in the best direction at the very least they will drop throughout the year like maybe maybe they'll be down halfway through the year they could recover but i think net net they're going to close the year down last stock i've got for you is play which is dave busters entertainment or something like that so what this is is a bunch of restaurants and arcades around the united states they've got a bucket load of locations they had like 174 at some point. That was like the last time I properly had a look at them. I don't know if they've got more or less now, but with the recession coming up, people are going to be less likely to spend as much money. And unfortunately for them, arcades and restaurants aren't on the highest list of priorities when you're trying to save money. So I think that they're going to run into some hardship. So that's just a little list of all my predictions for year's end we'll see how these pan out if i'm completely wrong that's going to be very embarrassing but i'm not going to hide i won't delete the video i'll admit it i'll admit i was wrong and then we'll reassess my investing strategy and my thesis to investments overall and whatnot but anyway those are my predictions for this upcoming year oh there's one prediction i forgot to mention I predict that you and I will crush this upcoming year. Let's go.